What up guys, Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we're continuing our series on the monomyth. Now if you haven't, if you have no idea what that is, go ahead and check out my last video on this. I'll leave a link in the description below. It gives an overview of what the monomyth is. It talks about the, the background, the history, the key components, and some real life application. The next few videos that we're going to do, however, I want to focus on, I want to go, I want to take a deep dive and go a step further so that we can talk about some more advanced steps in the monomyth. In order to do that, we're going to have to take, take steps. And in my mind, the most logical step is to first break the monomyth up into its three major phases or acts or major plot events. There are several different words that writers use depending on what kind of writer they are. Screenwriter, novelist, short story writer, poet, songwriter, whatever the case may be. We're going to look at the three main phases. And today in particular we're going to talk about the separation phase. And just as a review we have the three main phases are separation, initiation and the return. Today we're going to focus on the separation phase. In particular, we're going to talk about what the purpose is as a writer for the separation. What is what is the job of that beginning section of your story? And then in the next two videos, we're going to take a look at what are the mini steps that comprise the separation phase. And then lastly, we'll take a look at which what are the characters that, in a sense, must be introduced in this phase. So, now that you have an idea of where we're going, let's talk about the purpose of the separation phase. Because it is perhaps the most important part of your story. This is the thing that's going to catch you and hook, catch your, catch your audience and hook them in a good way so that they're engaged and they care about your story and your hero and the mission that they're on. So let's, let's talk about that because in my opinion, the separation phase really is the foundation of your entire work and just like a house if you don't lay the foundation properly everything's gonna crumble but if you lay it nice and sturdy then what's going to happen is as different challenges come your way you're gonna be able to look back to it and know exactly where you where you're where you're on strong footing because you know you set your story world up properly so let's talk about some of the some of the roles that some of the jobs that the separation phase performs. One, it introduces us to all of the key players, particularly your hero, and hopefully your villain as well. If your audience doesn't know who the hero is and doesn't know what they're about, then how can they care? Who do they know to get invested in? Who can they relate with to see the world through that a, a character's eyes. Who do they know to trust? Or maybe not trust, but the so it's very important. And one of the things that you want to do, this comes from screenwriting, is you want to set your in order to show your hero, you don't want to talk about like the hero is 10 feet tall and they like to eat pancakes. That's not important. What's important at this phase is to give your readers a reason to invest in the character. And a lot of times, the, the way that they're going to invest, the reason why they'll want to invest, is they're going to be able to relate with them. And that's normally by showing your hero their flaws, showing what their need is, showing what their desire is and 
depicting their their point of view, the way they look at the world. And a lot of times what you're going to find when you're setting up your story world is that what your hero wants and what they need are two different things. And they'll be in conflict with each other a lot of times because that's the way, in a sense, real life is. We want a lot of things. For example, we, we may want to stay right where we are because it's nice and comfortable. But what we really need to do is get out and practice at some skill in order to get better so that we can bring that into the world that we're, we're now living in and grow and help our circle of influence, whatever the case may be. So setting up your hero, showing their flaws, showing their desires, showing their needs, showing their, their hurts, those are always good places to start in order to get the audience to relate with the hero. Now before I go any further, some of you may be asking the same question that I asked when I went on this journey of learning about the monomyth and story structure. What about prologues? What about the quote unquote hook? The monomyth structure is set up in such a way where it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily touch on that, but I think we've seen enough examples in contemporary literature and Hollywood that we can say that other devices such as prologues and hooks can be used with great effect and, and can be used with the monomyth and there's no loss of fidelity. We may not see those tools, those writing devices being used in older stories, at least not to the degree that they are now, but I believe that's just an evolution that's happened in, in as, as stories have grown and narratives have grown and the audiences have become more used to story structure and have become more educated and, and influenced by it, sometimes they want prologues to be that first bookend on the story. But again, it's not necessary. And if you have any questions about prologues, I have a video on that as well. I'll try to leave a link in the description below. As far as a hook, a hook is just starting sort of in media res, starting at a point where there's some action, where there's some some sort of conflict going on that's going to reel the readers in. So if you think about some of the stories that we all have grown up to know and love, like Star Wars, it starts off where this tiny ship is being attacked by a Star Destroyer. And then eventually it's boarded and we get to meet Darth Vader right away. We get to meet Princess Leia right away. But there's conflict there. It reels you in because there's action. The droids escape. The question is, will the droids fulfill the secret mission? And then suspense builds and we're on our journey. If we look at Lord of the Rings, which is not science fiction, but it's it's fantasy, what we see is J.R.R. Tolkien uses a prologue and he uses Galadriel to sort of sum up the history of Middle Earth and just give us the key points that set the backdrop for what this, what's happening with the story. And in that, she talks about the Great Battle of the Ring and how Isildur killed Sauron by cutting him off and then taking the ring. But then it ends on suspense. The ring betrays Isildur and is lost and then is found by Gollum. So, and then we're, again, we're on our journey. Both of those happen before we meet our hero in the ordinary world, which is a key component of the monomyth and the hero's journey. So something to keep in mind, a hook and a prologue can be attached, but they're not necessarily required. It depends on the needs of your story, and it depends on your writing style. So going back to the purpose of separation, aside from setting up the the 
showing who the main hero is, somewhere in those first few pages, the first third of your book, you're going to want to give a glimpse into your villain. Your you, And the reason you want to do this is because, pardon me, there's police driving by, so I want to, there they go. So, the, 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 what you want to do is you want to show your villain in some manner, shape, or form, or at least hint at them. That way there is a an aspect of suspense and dread and maybe even fear for what might happen to the hero or the good guys or the people that they care about during this story. And again, the both of the examples that we gave... Both of the examples I just gave were where we have Star Wars and we have Lord of the Rings. We're introduced to the main villains right away. We're introduced to Darth Vader. We're introduced to Sauron. And throughout the course of the tr both of those trilogies, we see them terrorizing the heroes throughout. So... Aside from that, another thing that, that the separation phase is going to do is that it's going to set the tone. What kind of tone does your story have? And the best way I can explain tone is what is the feeling you want it to convey? Is it a happy-go-lucky feeling? Is it a casual feeling? Is it a very formal feeling? Is it a angry feeling that tone maybe it's melancholy but that tone is going to a lot of that is going to dictate how the characters speak and a lot of it honestly should be coming straight from the writer themselves in, in terms of what is your voice how do you write your characters how do you show your world in Stories like, I'm trying to think of a good story here, in stories like Pirates of the Caribbean, you get a sort of happy-go-lucky, jokey kind of feel. Despite all of the action, there's, there's a hint of comedy there. And so you can tell that those writers, that's the tone they were going for, was like f f suspenseful action, but also fun. The same thing could be said about the Avengers movies. A lot of the Avengers movies, there's a, there's a tone of, there's serious stuff going on in action, but there's jokes constantly being popped to alleviate the tension. However, some stories go the opposite direction, and they take a very serious tone throughout. For example, Inception is another, it's a good example of a story that is fairly serious throughout and it stays on a very high level in, in terms of thought processes and the, 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 the convention of how dreams are within a dream. So there, there's a, a, a convoluted part almost to it, but the, the tone is consistent throughout. So it doesn't throw the leaders it doesn't throw the readers or the audience for a loop. Theme is another thing that you're going to, going to want to set up along with genre. So I think everybody's familiar with genre. You know, if it's a if it's a western, you don't want halfway through the movie a spaceship to come flying in unless you've set it up that way, such as in Cowboys and Indians. In most cases, though, you're not gonna, that's an anomaly. That's a one-off. In most cases, a western. People have come to expect certain beats from those types of genres, shows, uh, stories. And also, they've come to expect that there won't be flying spaceships. On the other hand, with science fiction, it's sort of a staple of a space opera. When we look at fantasy, although it does span a large breadth, a lot of them, the quickest way to find out if it's a fantasy story is, does it have elves? Does it have ogres? Is there magic? Are there dragons? Things like that, again, 
are staples of a genre and will easily identify it. Now a theme, a theme, when you want to develop a theme, that is essentially the writer's outlook on life. It's the moral lesson, if you will. And it is not a question, it is a statement. So, for example, if your statement is that all of life's problems can only be figured out by love, then that's essentially what your story should show is that there are life problems and the only the people the people who succeed, particularly your hero, can only succeed through love. And I think a really good example of theme, if we were to look at some some well known movies, if you look at Fifth Element, the fifth element, which was supposed to be the strongest element, and the element that basically destroyed death and fear and dread in the movie was love. Lilu didn't understand love until her and Corbin kissed at the end and she could truly feel it and understand it. And that that was the underlying theme is that like love conquers all. Love conquers death. When we look at Star Wars, particularly A New Hope, you have Obi-Wan telling Luke when they're going to the Death Star and he puts the blast shields up to use his instincts to to feel the force and then later on when when Luke is going down the trench in the Death Star and he and he shoots that final blow that wins the the day he puts away his targeting computer and he follows Obi-Wan's advice which was to trust his own instincts and not rely so heavily on the machinery that surrounds him so that's the theme the theme is trust yourself depend be more independent and less dependent on other things if we look at well I think that's that's fairly good so that covers theme you want to have a theme you also want to raise a dramatic question which is sometimes the dramatic question that can change throughout for example the the first dramatic question might be when we look at Star Wars is will the droids get the message to Obi-Wan but in the as the story goes on the question becomes will Luke be able to save Leia will Han Leia and Luke be able to destroy the Death Star Will the rebels be able to defeat the empire and so on and so on? So the dramatic question can sort of, it starts in one point and then it can evolve and grow into a larger question as, as the story develops. But the theme, however, it's a statement. And as Chris Vogler points out in his book, The Writer's Journey, right here he points out that the when you end your story you want to end it on a statement so for example is it an exclamation point is it a period or is it a question mark and all of that you have to keep in mind when you're setting up the separation because again it's laying the foundation for the rest of your story I'm sure there's a lot more that I could go into. However, like I said, we're going to do some more videos. This one's at about 20 minutes. I think I've given you a lot of information to, to mull over. If I think of anything else, I'll drop it in the comments or I'll do another video. But for the most part, the, the separation has multiple purposes. It is the jumping off point of your story. It's the part that's supposed to reel the readers in grab their attention and hopefully they can relate with the hero and they they're interested in the dramatic question and the theme and the hero's flaws and the villain so that they want to invest their time and find out what is going to happen to these people so that's it for the purpose if you guys I hope that you guys found this helpful and interesting and if you did please give it a like and if you want to hear more videos like this 
please subscribe to my channel and what's going to happen is you'll get as soon as my videos come out you'll get a little notification it'll pop up on your YouTube page and then you can learn more about the monomyth but until next time take it easy